Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Northern Kentucky Spotlight Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Brookbank. I hope you guys are having a great Monday so far. Today on the podcast, we are joined by Tom Simpson. He is the Chief Operating Officer of Alta Fiber, formerly known as Cincinnati Bell. He's joining us to talk about their expansion efforts in Northern Kentucky, as well as what the rebranding means for the company and customers. Thank you to our podcast sponsors, CVG, our title sponsor, C Crew Consulting, our digital sponsor, and our episode sponsors, Haran and Harlem Bank. If you are looking to get outside and enjoy some incredible weather and make great connections, please join the Northern Kentucky Chamber for Business After Hours, sponsored by Frost Brown Todd at Brew Burger Bar. That is going to be on Thursday, May 12th, starting at 4.30. We hope you guys come out. You can register for that at nkychamber.com slash events. Additionally, later this month, we have the Government Forum, and that is going to be featuring Cincinnati Mayor Aftab Perval. That's going to be a really cool event, and it's also outside. That will be on Friday, May 20th, starting at 1130 a.m. at River's Edge at Newport Landing. Michael Monks, Chief Content Officer with Link Media, will emcee that event. You can also register at nkychamber.com slash events for that event and any upcoming chamber events that you might be interested in. Now, let's go meet our members of the week, hear from our sponsors, and we'll meet you guys back here with Tom. CVG Airport is the lowest fare airport in the tri-state region with 54 nonstop flights and direct international service to seven destinations, including Paris, France, and now home to both DHLs and Amazon's global cargo hubs. The airport is furthering its position as leader in aviation and is deeply committed to being an economic driver for the community. You can learn more and start your next adventure at CVGAirport.com. Ranking on Google Search and Maps is easy to understand, but hard to do. It requires constant effort and attention, uploading new photos, responding to Google reviews, writing weekly posts, and checking suggested updates. Google listing optimization takes experience and time, and there are no shortcuts. C-Crew gives your Google My Business account the steady, consistent attention it needs to be effective, optimizing, updating, and expanding critical content every single week. From local retail stores to large regional networks, C-Crew generates content, establishes benchmarks, and creates dramatic measurable increases in engagement. So what can C-Crew do for your business? More calls, more clicks, more clients. Congratulations to our members of the week. You can learn more about these businesses by following the Northern Kentucky Chamber on social media where we'll highlight one of these businesses each day. Now, let's meet our members of the week. EXP Realty is one of the fastest growing real estate brokerages, breaking boundaries through highly competitive compensation packages and a global community of agents. Reality Tuesday Cafe is an eclectic and casual Christian foundation coffee shop serving espresso, coffee, handmade pastries, and more. Tailored Home Solutions is a family owned and locally operated cleaning company that serves both residential and commercial clients in Cincinnati and the surrounding areas. Kelly Bros Lumber Co. provides billing materials, full kitchen and bath design, plumbing, tools and electric, decking and railing, windows and doors, interior and exterior trim, and a full line lumber yard. Dispatch Video is a video production and consulting company specializing in corporate, commercial, and promotional video content. Hi, everyone. I am joined by Tom Simpson. He is the Chief Operating Officer of Alta Fiber. Tom, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, and Alta Fiber might sound a little different for some people, but we typically know it as Cincinnati Bell. So um, why don't we jump right in and talk about this rebranding effort that you guys are going through right now? Sure, I would love to. Yeah, it's it's, uh, and I've been with the company long enough that uh, I'll, I'll still say Cincinnati Bell occasionally, and I think I think we all will for for some period of time. But you know, let, let's talk a little bit about the company's history. The 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 company has been well it started as Cincinnati Suburban Telephone and Telegraph. That was over 150 years ago. Um, I've heard stories, little known fun fact that. Alexander Graham Bell actually hand wrote the license to run public telephone systems based off his patents uh, before the Roadway Bridge was, was finished. So that that tells you the, the tenure of the business. And <clears throat> the company has transitioned to uh, Cincinnati Bell in the in the early 19th century or 20th century, and uh, has been that for for quite some time. And 
we've always honored that tradition, but but ultimately we have been expanding what we've been doing in the greater Cincinnati area. And Cincinnati Bell resonates, I think, with all of us because we've we've lived here and we've grown up here. Um, we're grown up here, but Cincinnati Bell doesn't necessarily resonate with how we're transforming the business from a telephone company business, which again honoring that heritage to really a technology and future forward fiber business. You know, fiber is the the infrastructure that powers everything going forward from the broadband service that you may know that you have from us. And, and we will be passing all of our, our footprint with, with fiber to the household or fiber to the business to future technologies such as 5G or things that we haven't anticipated yet. If you look at the longevity of the assets that were built in previous generations, um, that's really how we view fiber. And the whole point of Alta Fiber is we're expanding not just the greater Cincinnati area, but we're expanding our market in, in general. And, and we need something that resonates everywhere. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, like you said, that name recognition in Cincinnati is so high. But if you're expanding, which you guys are, you're not really going to get that if you're expanding to like Iowa, to say. Correct. Right. <laughs> so cool. why did you guys land on Alta Fiber? What does that really mean for you? Well, it's, you know, it's, you always think about what's in a name and, and you try to encompass, try to encompass the best of everything in a name. And I think we can all make jokes and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But for us, we, we wanted to, to show that we're trying to raise or hit the peak or to elevate things. You know, Alt is rooted in, in something that means high. If you speak Spanish, it also means to, to elevate if you, if you want to approach that. And, and of course, we're building fiber. So put, put, put name that name in the business. And, and ultimately, we want to elevate what we're doing as a business, elevate the communities that we serve, and do things like bridge that digital divide. So we tried to encompass all those things in the simplest name possible, which is not an easy task because a lot of names are taken, as you might say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I can imagine. And so um, as we talk uh, briefly just about this expansion and this growth that you guys are seeing, what are you guys doing regionally and nationally? Usually that's a, that's a good question. A lot of work in progress. You know, the the folks that that know and live uh, around Northern Kentucky or the, the Cincinnati MSA have probably known Cincinnati Bell and Fioptics. And there's always been a version of uh, Fioptics of do you have copper or do you have fiber? And the commitment that we've made to the community is we are 100% fiber passing the entire region. So that means if, if you don't have fiber now and you, you only have uh, a DSL service or a copper server from, from us, you will have fiber. We, we are expanding that region. As we look at the, the three counties in Northern Kentucky, uh, Kimball, Canton, or Kenton, Campbell, and Boone County, I apologize. And uh, the, the goal there has been to ensure that we 100% fiber pass even the very rural areas that typically haven't had the ability to, to receive the infrastructure that really powers education, the economy, innovation, things like that. And that's something that we've seen that we can do in Cincinnati. So we're looking at this, why not repeat it? Uh, we have been uh, prospecting and building in the, the Dayton region, the Dayton MSA. Um, we've announced Green County up there. And, and ultimately, the goal is to approach the same way. If, if I look at the, the region as it sits right now, the Dayton MSA and the Cincinnati MSA are technically combined together the 18th largest MSA in the U.S., and that includes Northern Kentucky. That is, that is a big population center that is seeing a lot of investment, and Northern Kentucky is certainly part of the economic engine that grows that. And we're continuing to look south. Um, we are actively building in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, so more counties will be lit in the same fashion. Yeah, that's one of the things when we talk about uh, Kentucky, especially that idea of like high-speed internet has been mm -hmm. a very big conversation in the past couple of years. So it's great. Um, earlier this year, we had another telecom company that was on uh, with us to talk about their expansion efforts. Can you kind of touch on the importance of that in the state of Kentucky and what exactly you guys are accomplishing when you talk about getting that high-speed internet to underserved communities? Yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, it's the, the economics of this business and, and you look at what's happened in the past 30 years nationally. It's, it's always relatively easy to hit the easy to reach communities and the communities that can afford to pay a lot for, for broadband services or, or LTE or 5G services. 
but we've nationally talked about the digital divide for, oh my gosh, just, I think it's been over 30 years at this point. So how do you fundamentally bridge that digital divide? And I think the, the last two years of, of a pandemic that, that we're seeing the other side of, I, I believe has taught us all that you, you need to have that fabric and that connectivity to ensure that your kids can do distance learning now or in the future, that you can actually have the ability to work from home. We're, you know, we're both doing these, this, this podcast remotely and looking at each other on video. The fact that we can do that means that you need that deep connectivity. And it's great for us, but there's still a lot of people that don't have that advantage. And that advantage brings economic power and that you can work anywhere in the world if you have that connectivity. And that advantage can bring education. And both of those two things together are, are how you lift or elevate society in general. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. That was very insightful. I'm going to pivot kind of briefly um, to kind of talk more about a different type of expansion that you guys are doing. Recently, you acquired a Hawaiian telecom. That's another telecom <clears throat> company. And you're trying to do uh, some of the same things that you've done here. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? We have that. The uh, Hawaiian telecom was a, an acquisition that's that's going on three years now. And when we looked at a lot of a lot of similarities, it was a business that had started investment in fiber um, and and passing all of their communities, but it simply couldn't go fast enough. And as we look at Hawaiian Telecom, you know, there's you have to connect a lot of dots to look at the, the 4,100 miles of separation between Cincinnati and Hawaii. But <clears throat> what's interesting about the entire the entire area is largely there's there's two degrees of separation in Cincinnati, just as there seems to be two degrees of separation in, in Hawaii. Uh, when I first moved to Cincinnati, people ask you where you went to school and, and they meant what, what high school you went to. When, when you go to Hawaii, it's exactly the same question. And, and it's funny because when, when we look at that and we look at we, we look at the business as a whole, you have the same fundamental issues. The Dense areas have connectivity. The high, the high wealth and population centers have connectivity, but there's still a vast deficit in connectivity through the, out, the entire state. It was an, an opportunity to expand what we do here in Hawaii and, and help that business bring the same level of connectivity. Now, that's, that's what's called inorganic expansion, and, we, and we've done that, and we, we, we continue to do some, some other acquisitions, but Ultimately, what you'll see is continued market expansion for for us and and our management team, and ultimately the whole the whole premise of taking the company private and not being publicly traded anymore is to ensure that we can we can make the investment at the pace that's needed to future proof the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's. Really cool to hear um, that organic expansion. You kind of touched on it with the Dayton MSA, kind of bringing those two regions kind of connected. When you think about the future of Alta Fiber um, and the expansion that you guys are trying to do nationally, what's like 10 years from now look like? Where are you guys going to be regionally? Like how expanded is this network going to be for you guys? That's a, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, if, uh, if, if I could... If I could really predict 10 years in the future that well, um, I would also buy a couple of Powerball tickets at the same point in time. But, but let's look at the investment that we're making. Um, when you look at, again, um, Boone, Kitten, Campbell County, Kentucky, you know, we, we, we had decided that we were going to pass the remaining 95,000 households that were really un, unserved or underserved with our fiber. You know, we, we asked for a little bit of, of gap funding from, from each county. The counties provided $35 million in gap funding. We're, we made the rest of the investment, uh, $150 million to, to pass the rest of the household. And those are areas that might be underserved by us, really have no, no competition or some competition, but it really was a digital divide. And mm -hmm. if I look at that and, and play that forward, the goal for us, if, if I look at the, again, the, the super region of the Cincinnati, Dayton, MSA, you, you see Lexington, you see Louisville, you see Columbus, there's a large portion of the U.S. in just the tri-state area at a bare minimum uh, might have connectivity, might not have connectivity, but if you have that and you have that deep in the region, it's going to help with economic development. Mm -hmm. you, you look at the you look at the development of uh, a Ford battery plant in Kentucky. You look at the development of an Intel uh, silicon manufacturing plant for just right outside of Columbus. 
Both of those are going to bring jobs. Both of those are going to bring knowledge workers and, and frontline workers. And both of those are going to require uh, a vast supply chain of other businesses that are all going to need connectivity because it is a global economy at this point. And, and as I play that forward 10 years, ultimately that gets us to a point where if I were to look at what, what was Cincinnati Bell that was just a very small region around 20 miles just right outside of, of the center of Cincinnati, we could touch four to five million potential households in, in a tri-state regional alone. Yeah, that's incredible. That's a lot of people to be yeah, a lot uh, of people. serving. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things you touched on, um, that gap funding and expanding the network in Northern Kentucky, that was a really big investment in the infrastructure, providing that for the community. Um, not only do you guys provide a lot of like business investment in the terms of that, you guys also have the Bell Foundation that's making really big changes in our region as um, like a community partner, as a nonprofit. So can you talk a little bit about the Bell Foundation? Yeah, I would love to. Um, and we, we have some great people that are that are running the foundation now. We, we've we've all, you know, Lee and I, we've the, the entire management team. We've we've always had a culture of, of philanthropic engagement. You know, if if you're fortunate, more fortunate than other folks, you should give back to the community. Um, we we have always been a large uh, uh, sponsor and uh, participatory engagement at a, at a employee level with United Way and ArcWave and Cancer Free Kids and organizations like that that really do move the needle forward. Um, now we're at a point where not only do we have that, but we've started a foundation. And its whole goal is to look for other community causes and give grants out. You know, the 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 first foray into this 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 calendar year with a 150 year old business is to celebrate that by by giving out 150 thousand grants, um, purely to to not for profit uh, organizations. And we do those efforts because I look at that, and when you take those programs or you combine it with we have. Um, we have a program with our employees where each and every employer in our entire business has 40 hours a year that to go work in a community. They're paid just like their normal job, and you just go work in a community. We, we try to help with providing uh, options um, and menus such as Keep Cincinnati Beautiful, you know, community projects, go work with schools and, and churches and libraries. Whatever the thing is in the community, that is the thing that is going to help uplift everybody. And, and that is the goal of, of our business overall. Yeah. And then on that note, um, being in Northern Kentucky, being greater Cincinnati, you guys have been here for many, many, many years. Why do you think it's important being here? And why do you think it's important to the success of your business being in the region? Um, look at the, the, the superpower that we have in, in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Uh, in this region, Northern Kentucky alone is, is we're, we're sandwiched in between Cincinnati, Dayton, MSA, and you don't have to go very far south, and you have uh, Lexington and Louisville. That's a that's a region that is seeing economic growth, and you're you're in an area that the the cost of living is outstanding. The the schools are good, and this is a place that you can you can come work and, and live, and and again either work anywhere in the world or work in a place that sees a lot of a lot of uh, economic growth. I think that's important to the region because again those are the things that continue to fuel growth growth and development to uplift everybody. I think we're we're poised as a whole to see continued renaissance in, in economic development in this area. Um, you know as I see it, if if you roll forward back to the 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 10 year time frame. Uh, look at the development that you see around Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Um, if you've ever been to that region, uh, it's hard to tell what's Dallas, what's Fort Worth, what's Plano, or anything else. I'm not saying that we want the urban sprawl until the end of time, but that region has provided good jobs, good education, good growth, and and ultimately Northern Kentucky is very well poised to to, to execute on that. Yeah. Well, Tom, uh, that was a really good point. Uh, it's very interesting if you you think about the the dynamic of that Texas area. Crazy when you're down there if you haven't been. But um, yeah. it's crazy to think that we could become something like that in 10 years from now. But Tom, before I let you go, is there anything else that you wanted to impart to our podcast guests uh, about Alta Fiber, about your rebranding, about the company, about the future? 
I think, I think that's the, the biggest thing. The biggest message is this is taking a company that, that has been around for 150 years and ensure it's here for another 150 years and headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio. The, those, those jobs will be headquartered here. And as we grow, it's going to continue to create jobs uh, in a technology center. Yeah. And, and I, I hope I, if you're not a customer now, please become one. And, and, and thank you if you are. Well, Tom, thank you so much again for joining us today. It was a great conversation. I'm excited to see what else Fiber does in the future for our region and for the nation. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Shannon Schumacher, Account Executive, Kentucky Market Leader. At Haran, we champion bold innovation to help employers and individuals thrive. As an industry thought leader, we explore new horizons in healthcare, benefits, employee engagement, and wellness. We work harder to deliver all the strategic benefits, planning, and execution you expect from a true partner. And we do it with laser focus on your short and long-term outcomes to help manage your benefits while improving your employee experience. So Heartland is celebrating its 110th anniversary this year. Recently, we partnered with the Kinkle family and the Fisher family in Northern Kentucky, Boone, Kenton, and Campbell counties. And we have three uh, offices there to serve the Northern Kentucky region. Just remember, when the economy heats up, come see us at Heartland Bank, where banking really feels good. Come on over to Heartland, where banking feels good. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Tom of Alta Fiber. thought he had some really great insights on what customers can expect and what we could be seeing in the future in greater Cincinnati uh, for our internet connections. It's really great to have that company located here in our hometown. Thank you to our podcast sponsors, CVG, Crew Consulting, Haran, and Heartland Bank. Don't forget to go to nkychamber.com slash events to register for upcoming programs like Business After Hours and Government Forum. On that landing page, you can find all of the upcoming Chamber events. We have a really great run of events coming up in the spring and the summer, and we're constantly adding things. So please go and check that out. I know I highlight a lot of them here on the podcast, but there are plenty more that I don't get to just because there are so many. And finally, if you are a member who would like to be featured on the podcast, or if you're someone who is interested in joining the Northern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, please reach out to Lynn Ablin. You can find her contact information on our staff directory at nkychamber.com or on the screen in front of you. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and I will talk to you next week. Congratulations to our members of the week. You can learn more about these businesses by following the Northern Kentucky Chamber on social media, where we'll highlight one of these businesses each day. Now, let's meet our members of the week. EXP Realty is one of the fastest growing real estate brokerages, breaking boundaries through highly competitive compensation packages and a global community of agents. Reality Tuesday Cafe is an eclectic and casual Christian Foundation coffee shop serving espresso, coffee, handmade pastries, and more. Tailored Home Solutions is a family-owned and locally operated cleaning company that serves both residential and commercial clients in Cincinnati and the surrounding areas. Kelly Bros Lumber Co. provides billing materials, full kitchen and bath design, plumbing, tools and electric, decking and railing, windows and doors, interior and exterior trim, and a full line lumber yard. Dispatch Video is a video production and consulting company specializing in corporate, commercial, and promotional video content.